bags are packed, are you ready to go? This time tomorrow we'll be on the road Riding with you in the sunnier days I wouldn't want it any other Welcome back to Children of Airte. We're so excited to have you. And first, as usual, we will go to Adam with our sponsors. Our incredible sponsors, starting with Idol Champions of the Forgotten Realms. Yay. Thank you for joining us. If you are just coming from playing the game to snag your Electrum chest code, <laughs> you can see that on the overlay or floating around in chat. Thank you so much, Idol Champions of the Forgotten Realms. Many I, again, I think everyone in the cast here has a character in that game, so check <laughs> it out. Um, lots of fun uh, to play. It is uh, not going right now because I want to make sure it doesn't kill the stream, but it does go at other various points uh, when I'm supposed to be working on other things <laughs> during the week. So, so check out <laughs> Idle Champions. We also have Die Hard Dice. And we're going to give uh, do some giveaways and chat. So check that out. It's going to be happening soon. They have graciously supplied our cast with, here we go. Marcus Reedner again, has given us our alliterative different dice synonyms. And this week it is, they have supplied us with exploration and trusters, um, exploration and trusters. Uh, that we are rolling on the stream here tonight. And so you can go over to Die Hard Dice and use the code AIRTE to get 10% off any order. They also, uh, Demiplane recently had an on-site where the team gathered and we did a, a ton of <laughs> annual planning and everything. And they supplied us with uh, several dice sets. And it was awesome to see our team fighting over who got which ones that were their favorite. But uh, but all of them were great. Check out Die Hard Dice and thank you very much, Die Hard. And then finally, we have the dulcet tones of Sirenscape that will be going uh, because epic games need epic sound. And I think that is everything other than my introduction. I am Adam Bradford. I'm the CDO at Demiplane. You can find me on Twitter at BadEyeAdam. And I am playing a very cold and wet and uh, completely <laughs> drained of all adrenaline at this point, Silas Jordan. <laughs> Hey everyone, I'm Alicia Marie. You can find me on socials at Alicia Marie Body. I am a professional custom artist and RPG performer. And you can also find me on the Traveler, the new Traveler series on the Glass Cannon pod that starts later on this month. So do a different thing. But tonight I am playing your snake bitten, confused, <laughs> and uh ready to get the heck out of here lawyer <laughs> for the arm stuff. So. Hello, I am Jen Kretschmer. You can find me on Twitter as at DreamWisp. You can find me streaming on Twitch as DreamWisp Jen. Um, I am on Wednesdays playing uh, a character on Vampire the Nightlife on Play Renegade. I, I'm an author. I am a performer. I do all sorts of wild stuff. So you can find me <laughs> on, uh, find more on there. And also, happy Disability Pride Month. Yay. Yay. Um, I saw the new flag yesterday. Isn't it great? Yeah, they revised our flag because even for, for more. Um, yeah, for more accessibility, so it's exciting, anyway. Uh, yes, and tonight I will be playing Maeve Morgan Flynn, your friendly neighborhood troublemaker. Hi, I'm Lauren Urban, I'm the content coordinator over at Idol Champions of the Forgotten Realms. You can find me on Twitter as Oba Lauren. You can find me here tonight playing Neb, who might be the only person who is ready to explore more. <laughs> Hi, my name is Hope Lavelle. You can follow me on Twitter at the Hope Lavelle. I am a motion capture performer by day and by night. I am a D and D enthusiast. And tonight I will be playing Miss Robin Beckett, who at this moment, in like probably the first time in her life, is feeling useless. And she, it's her first time where she's feeling like she's not helping at all. So let's see what happens. Oh no, that must be remedied. Uh, I am Deborah Ann Wool. I am your friendly neighborhood storyteller. <laughs> the 
<laughs> to take a page from Abe. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, I am I'm an actor. I'm a, a writer. All of those sorts of fun, creative thingies. Uh, so yeah, let's uh, jump back in here. Oops, I'm sorry. I'm in a funny new place. Uh, so thank you, players, so much for being here. Thank you, everyone, for joining us at home. So let's get comfortable and settle in for the 13th episode of Children of Air Today. <laughs> All right, so where we left off, um, Feruza and Silas had just finally made their way back up onto the trestle bridge after dealing with these uh, sort of <laughs> water snakes at the bottom. Um, the, the team up top did a very good job of, of getting them back up to safety, um, but it is still, it's around now going to be about midday. You guys woke up early, but you took some time to set up your ropes, um, and then you did a, you know, at least an hour or two sort of exploring there. So you're looking at like midday now. Um, I also just want to offer to you and everyone at home so they know because you took that time to set up your ropes properly and Robin had some expertise, that's going to be free movement for you. Um, it doesn't mean there might not be an encounter that might happen in there, but I'm not <laughs> going to ask you for athletics checks every time you want to climb the shaft <laughs> back to your home base. Um, so that is, that is sort of free space. It takes, you know, it'll take time to do it, but uh, there won't be checks for it. So there we are. Uh, you are finally reunited after your split the party adventures. Take it away. Mm. Is everybody okay? Um, Bruce is just gonna stand up, check out her leg to see what it looks like. And it definitely mm. doesn't look as bad as it feels. And she's gonna look over at Silas. And with that even like any sort of like pre or anything, she's just gonna literally run over it and like grab you in the most awkward bear hug you've ever, ever had in your life. And then she's gonna let you go and like step back. And um, thank you, Silas. That was like some Mission Impossible stuff. Uh, I mean, I have to, I actually wanna thank all of you. I am, um, right now I'm, I really don't know what's going on, but I'm, there's a lot, there's a big part of me right now that just feels like I'm, I'm making it harder for you guys. I'm holding you back or something. I don't, I don't know. I'm just, I have a snake bite. I almost got Silas killed. This is a lot for me right now. No, no, don't you ever think that way. You're part of this adventure just as much as the rest of us. We don't know what's going on as much as you do. We're figuring this out together and we need you. So, I mean, you never know when you're going to need an attorney, so. <laughs> or or a pull-up queen. <laughs> or a pull-up queen. But certainly, a, you know, breaking and entering. Bit of, bit of we legal actually, support, isn't it? We actually appreciate your grounded look at the world. We need that, so don't change. And Neb uh, is, like, looking but, but over the side. maybe take the car next time. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'll remind you, all yes, as Nev was about to, you are standing in the center of this <laughs> trestle bridge in a giant uh, cavern. Yes. So do we think that was just like a regular snake or something really weird? Is anything here regular? That's actually true. I, I got a good look at it. And I mean, it was all white, but it had this like bony crested crown on. And it was massive until Maeve took half of it out Hmm. That was very cool. Uh, you know, um, not to ruin the mood, but we should get going. I don't oh. know how much longer I can deal so with this vertigo. Before we decide which direction to go, though, now that we hopefully can hear each other a little bit easier, what was that way? What What did you run into? It, it was a, a dead end, I should say. I mean, there was... Oh, there's there's a tunnel there, but it's there's water first. It's sort of a pool with the tracks for the cars continuing that way, but it, it narrows into a smaller tunnel. And so. I have never been a granny before, but I am being one now, and I think that is extremely dangerous. You never go underwater in a cave unless you are an expert. I feel you know, like Perusa and Silas just proved that, actually. <laughs> yeah, I'm not interested in any water in this cave at all. I'm also, I'm also not sure if I want to go back where we were. The little bottle of water that Maeve is referring to, we tested it and it was a lot deeper than three feet, right? 
Did we yes. was it breathy? You just you discovered that it it slopes down. You didn't go very yeah. far into it, but that it feels like it can, gets deeper the further in. You I, I mean, I, you know, I, I hate to be the one to say this, but I mean, what if the mirror shard is in in that water? <laughs> well, yeah. then. Maybe the mirror doesn't need the shard. Maybe it isn't good enough at like a ninety-seven percent. I mean, we're down here. <laughs> so then I take it fighting, you didn't you know, find it with the rats. What no. did you find with the rats? Oh, there is so much that I want to tell you, but we should go in a direction and then maybe like take a moment and get get you dry and and then we can fill you all in because there is a lot. Nev, ne- listen, like before we move anywhere, I am trying so hard right now not to steal your thunder. I mean, you're going to tell them, right? Like, oh, oh, yeah, absolutely. But I feel like uh, Robin is looking over the side, looking a little upset and you are all wet. And I, I feel bad going into all of the fun stuff we did just after we got here and everything was bad. So okay, let's just, do we want to go back the way we came towards the ropes or do we want to try to go back where you were finding i mean you're already wet maybe it'll be okay to go into the water over there i mean if we don't want to go to the water now then we can go back because we saw that there is another chute that we could possibly go down where somebody almost certainly fell to their death um but maybe we'll be you know luckier than that and uh, maybe we can get to wherever that that other tunnel leads. So I guess what I'm saying is if we investigate that one and it seems like worse than going through water, then yeah. we can always come back here. So I, I'm okay with that approach. The, um, the t- okay, so when we get to the fourth level, there was this direction and that yes. direction, correct? But mm-hmm. did, did we investigate that direction? It was you like- have a- not yet. So where uh-huh. where Feruza left the ring is a fork in the road. You went right, you have not yet explored left. What Silas is talking about is the crevice on the mm-hmm. other side of the rock fall. Yes. Um, so yes, there is still one tunnel that is, is sort of left unexplored at this point on this level, as well as the crevice. Well, there's, <laughs> more, there's more to see, okay, so, so let's go see. Is different right. than the, the crevice is different than the left fork Perfect. of this space, yeah. And well, there's the other floors we're going to have to go to. Yes. So if we're yeah. going to have to go to. Oh, uh, yes. Yeah, that's, that's part of what we need <laughs> we to talk about. The so. We, we need to, uh, you know, uh, apparently scurry is my favorite word now because <laughs> scurry. I am really, really um, just kind of overwhelmed with scurrying. Um, and so we need to scurry back that direction. And then we need to tell you about a puzzle that we found. I mean, Silas, maybe you liked hanging out with the rats more than you thought. Scurrying is definitely on my mind. But we should, yes, scurry. Back. And we can always come back here later when you're uh, dry. And now that we know what's what's this way. Um, I am sorry. Right. I've never scurried anywhere in my life, but I'll try. There's always time to try new things. Who who but, wants to get into the car? Oh, I Maeve's think, already in the yeah. car. Maeve's in it. Can Someone anyone else fit in there? Someone else would fit, maybe not Silas or Feruza, but, but maybe <laughs> Neb, precious Neb, get in the car. Precious <laughs> Neb could fit in with me. I, I, I'm a, Feruza's, okay, no, Feruza walk. folds. I believe Feruza yeah. folds folds fairly well, so Feruza might be able to. Make yeah, it. maybe maybe with Feruza's hurt leg, she should get in the car. Oh, that makes good. sense. Feruza, let me push you. I get can get out if I need to. No, so Feruza, if uh, Maeve and Feruza can figure out a way to sort of fold their and legs in half. <laughs> so Bruce is going to get in first and her legs literally just folded up to her knees. <laughs> she's just sort of like this. And then she looks at Babe and she's like, well, come on then, something's time. Silas is winding up and untying uh, paracord mm-hmm. and, and getting mm-hmm. everything. And then I am going to take, um, I, I'm assuming that there's some place that I can loop that through on the card as well because yes. Silas is not going to pull and walk backwards on this. He's going to put the rope there and then just see his, you know, over his shoulder as, as he's walking. But gotcha. also <laughs> if he falls, he can hopefully hang on to the rope. Okay. So yes, Silas, um, there's definitely, there's a coupler, you know, to, to attach the cart to another, if it needs to, you're able to find enough, uh, you know, holes in that to tie the rope to you wrap it around yourself. So the way we've got this right now is Maeve and Feruza are in the cart. 
Uh, Silas, you have tied yourself essentially to the front of the cart. Robin, you're still pushing from behind. Neb, what would you like to do? I think she's going to go back. She's basically in the front of the group because she was yes. the last one to come onto the bridge. So she's going to go back the, the way way we came. She's going to light up her hand again to provide Great. light and try to help guide everybody to the other side. Fantastic. Neb, Neb, hold on before you go. And then Silas is going to take, you know, the slack that um, he has in front of him and he's going to tie that off and clip it into her um, climbing <laughs> gear as well. So if the cart goes over, everyone's going if over. If the cart yeah, goes over, Robin, over. Robin, let's Woo! go. <laughs> Just kidding. I mean, I, I guess that makes a lot of sense. All right. the, the cart should be st more stable than humans walking. On it, so that's what the bet is here. That's, that's Fantastic. fair. Fantastic. A DM's favorite words. All right. Um, so, yes, you start to walk forward, Neb, followed by Silas with Maeve and Fruz in the cart and Robin holding on at the back, pushing. Um, as you walk, you know, taking it slow, being careful, this light, Neb, is just sort of sparking, just, um, uh, I shouldn't say, uh, the light is just bouncing off of the walls in this cavern. As you take your little peeks over the side, you now can see just those little gentle circling movements in the water below of more life down there. Uh, uh. But you try to keep your focus forward. Um, <clears throat> every so often, a bat will fly through the, uh, the light as well and then disappear into the sort of darkness of the caverns above. Silas just says, wait, wait, wait. Now, can you shine as much as you can up on the ceiling here? And I don't know how tall the ceiling is, but yeah. uh, Silas, like when we are kind of like in the middle point where he can get as much perspective as possible, um, he, he just says, so we're looking for letters, right, Neb? M more on that later, more on that later. Uh, <laughs> we're looking for letters, and in every video game ever, there's a letter hidden, like gigantic, where you have to change your perspective. So maybe there's a, like letters in the <laughs> cave, and Silas is just going to try to see as much in the cave as possible um, and, and see if there happen to be any very large, maybe unnoticeable, unless you're changing your perspective letters inside the cave. I'm sorry, why Why are we looking for letters uh, in yeah, the cave? Yeah, 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 seriously. Who was we'll writing letters? We'll, we'll get to that, I promise. <laughs> Steve is writing letters. Steve left us letters? Like, yes, oh, what, what was he writing about? Uh, <laughs> we're trying to figure that out. Uh, Silas, t to your point, I can only get light as far as I can reach. Otherwise, I'm throwing fire. Uh, um, you just need but, a flashlight. Uh, well, yeah, but I don't want to throw fire at the bats. But, um, uh, Miss Robin, uh, you have to make those balls of light before. Can you do that again? Yes, absolutely. Uh, she's going to kind of spin her hand and she's mm -hmm. like and she's spins the other and these three orbs appear and she gently lets them up that is they so sort cool. of float up into the air um you can see that actually the roof it's probably about 40 feet above you so the light just sort of begins to catch it however it's almost hard to make out because there are so many bats on the ceiling uh that all you see see is sort of a writhing mass of little black and brown rat or rats uh bats just sort of cleaning themselves and their wings spread and come back and every once in a while you see a little something drop little droplets of something fall from the ceiling um and it's just again uh, a huge colony of bats wow uh, you know uh, how uh how expensive guado is so we should uh... <laughs> Miss Robin, I bet you would be so popular at parties with these glowing <laughs> balls that you can just summon. Um, yeah, and so certainly the talking about collecting guano would help with that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this place is full of guano and gold. Basically, we're rich. <laughs> yeah. All right. So if they've got letters up there, we're going to have to clear out all the bats. But we'll see. So so let, let's get back to some kind of stable ground and then fill everybody in on what the letters mean. <laughs> All right. So you made it, make it back to the opening, pushing your cart. You're now solidly in the solid ground tunnel. Um, you know, you can keep pushing. You can even, if you go, you can make it back to the intersection um, and feel pretty secure there. Let's get le back to at least the fork. Right? It, it, yeah, is, that's is the fork. Yes. Okay, back yeah. towards the fork where the styrofoam uh, rocks are and the ring was left. Yes. 
And Robin is just letting those uh, four lights just kind of dance around us, or maybe even leading the way a little bit. Perfect. Cool. So, tell us what happened. Oh, so yeah. the rap party, did you? <laughs> you didn't take any rabies as a party favor or anything, did you? Nab, if oh, you don't tell them what happened with you first, I'm going to steal the thunder. Like, I mean, we can talk about letters, but like what happened with you before I flicked you? Oh, you mean turning into a rat. Okay, so yeah. I'm um, sorry, so what? The yeah. party <laughs> happened and it was really, it what was did fun. What do to you? Christine had birth and everybody was partying and it looked like Gross. so much fun. And then I was a rat. <laughs> and then Silas was really upset because he didn't know that I was a rat. And then I wasn't a rat again. And that hurt a little bit, but then he healed me. It was great. How did you turn into a rat? Was it the rats that did it? No, well... I don't think so. No, I think I just thought really hard about how much fun it would be because they were they were really having a lot of fun. I know I know some of you were creeped out by the idea, but they were really adorable and so I just thought really hard about how it'd be easier to join in if I was a rat and then I was and then I wasn't. Yeah, and that was really great. Now, you know, my perspective on the story is a little bit different than that. Um, I would not <laughs> use words like adorable um, or, or any of those things, but um, it absolutely was a party. Um, they were gyrating and I guess what passes is dancing. And uh, yeah, the birth part was really gross. Like it was super gross, um, but they had babies. <laughs> And oh. Ned turned into a rat. Now, we don't know if she can turn into like a velociraptor um, or a dodo bird because we don't know the rules with like extinction yet. Um, but that's something that we will absolutely test out and see what happens. Oh, I'm excited. This is tremendous. And so, this, did, did you turn into a rat? <laughs> I, I tried really, really hard. And honestly, you know, I have a lot of different favorite animals. Uh, the one that I was thinking about the most was like the liger, uh, but I didn't tell Neb that while we were up there. I was thinking about a liger, and I could not turn into a liger. I could not turn into an ankylosaurus. Um, I, I I couldn't do it. I think that you know you know how some of us are able to heal things, or some of us are yeah. able to just make fun of things to the point where it like actually harms them, uh, which I'm it's really appropriate that I got that. You mean uh, internet trolls? Or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, pretty much like uh, Colin <laughs> Robinson or something, right? And so it's like, uh, you know, that kind of thing going on. Yeah. But then like Feruza, I know you've all seen it, these little sparks. It's like, you know, psh, 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 psh. it's like static electricity when you when you touch, the, you know, the doorknob after being on the carpet too long. Yeah. But she's like doing it like a lot and it seems like it's making her stronger. Miss Robin can do light balls just floating around. Um, yeah. Maeve, like, I think that, like, you have so much of an attitude that that somehow just oozes out and, like, literally. Just, like, like, yeah, yeah, you have an attitude. I'm not saying it's a bad thing. It's like an attitude, you know, because <laughs> every time you get mad, you're like, no. And it, it's it's not like a, a weird, like, <laughs> no, you know, no, like, because that, that was really lame after all that build up. But <laughs> I'm saying that when you do it, you're like, no. And then like something I can barely see like what it is, but something shoots out. It's like, it's what blew that snake halfway up. And so like, I, what I'm saying is we all have these different things. And I don't think I can have an attitude and just say no. And then stuff happened with it. I don't know if any of us can turn into animals, but Neb absolutely turned into a mouse. We don't know if she's able to Rat. turn into other things yet. Yeah, sorry, 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 rat. What kind of rat did she look like? Like, did it look like Neb's face with a rat body? Was it a rat? Oh, no, that's hair? terrifying. Like, what was the rat? <laughs> okay, good. I'm glad it, that, no, I think it was a regular weird, rat. Because, <laughs> but Neb, yes. do you think you can do it again at will? I don't know, let me try. And she's going to, she had been pulling out the notebook to show all of the notes of everything. Yes. And then she's just gonna hand it to Silas and think back to that moment with all of the, the rats partying and how happy everybody was. And she's going to this time picture herself there as a rat. And there's a moment where nothing happens to make sure I can do it again. Yes. I was gonna say, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'm like, and then, <laughs> yes. Yeah, so, so, I have to make sure I still have the energy for it. Hold on. 
And then all of a sudden she's gone and on the ground there is uh, a rather large, because it's a cave rat, um, it's a blue black rat, it's that black uh, fur with a blue shimmer on it. You can tell it's and, and the, uh, the little white paws and the Aww. rat tail and she's standing up on her hind legs going. So many questions. <laughs> Number one, where do the clothes go? <laughs> And Neb is going to say, I don't know. I don't think I'm wearing anything. And all you hear is. <laughs> this is Wait. great, Neb. I mean, if you, I know you're super brave. I hope you can understand me right now, by the way. We, <laughs> I, yeah, of could... course. I mean, I think. Uh, can you understand me? Wait, can you not speak uh, you know, English right now? You're not understanding anything I'm saying? <laughs> Eb, we don't don't understand a thing you're saying. Oh, oh. It would, that's but gonna be difficult. Neb can go into these tiny spaces and 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 help us investigate and, and explore. Well, yeah, rats can just like clean the walls, right? I think you're thinking of spiders. I don't. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I'm into a spider. <laughs> I, I I didn't look up what the rat can actually do. Uh, we'll, we'll find it. Yeah, yeah, there it is, there it is. Douglas says that, and I'm going to look over at a wall, and I'm going to scramble on over it and try to climb. Yeah. I, I don't have a climb speed as this creature. That's so crazy. You should have a little bit of something. Well, just give me give me a rat uh, strength check, please. Oh. And ironically enough, this is probably the one beast that has a, a, a smaller Hello. strength. Than That's I. so funny. Yeah, I, I should have. You know what? She doesn't know. I need yeah, to. she doesn't know. That's that's a five. That's a five. Oh my god! The little rat just goes, <laughs> and just little uh, little little grains of, so, of dirt okay. and rock fall. Okay, I mean, I thought that so, rats could do that. I thought they do in movies, but maybe not everything in movies right. is real. But can she turn back? How how many times can she do this? Oh, She's all not I gonna did get last stuck time was hit like her. that, is she? Like, like yeah, just smack her, and I think she <laughs> smack her. Well, no, that's what happened oh, last no. time, though. All the possibilities now. Well, we could use my yarn and make a little harness for her and just drop her down into the cavern. I thought you were about to say noose or something. I'm sorry. None of this is okay. None of this is okay. Well, well, no, this I'm is our friend. Like, what, you want her? Well, yeah. I mean, she was my friend before, but I didn't we, know we, we need to ask her before we put her on a leash. Well, we won't be able to understand what she says back. And then at this point figured out that she they don't understand her when she talks and so she's just trying her best to do a Marcel Marceau. <laughs> yeah. Are you really in there, Neb? Are you really in there? All right, we need to figure out Morse code or something if you're going to be turning into things like oh, this. Oh, I know Morse oh. code. <laughs> of course you do. Are you rolling? Now, why do you know there? Morse code, Miss Rob? Yeah, I had to back in the war times. I spent my time as a field nurse, and it's just something you had to do to contact people. Which Robin, you war? are a superhero. <laughs> so, the big one. Neb turns into a rat, but we didn't find the shard. No, no, no. Oh, but, 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 yeah, and that's the thing. So, I was going to let Neb tell this story, but I don't think she can tell stories right now. So... Uh, this is and Silas is taking out the notebook. Yes. Um, and he's like, I've got this on my phone, but I don't want to waste the battery. But listen, when Christine, that was her name. I don't know why rats have human names, but I guess it's what they hear. Maybe humans but, have rat names. Okay. <laughs> the rat's very excited. <laughs> Neb, Neb, Neb rat is very excited. <laughs> yeah. That, well, well, yeah. Anyway, so um, so Christine was giving birth, and again, very, very gross. I don't want any, I, I didn't draw that part. Very um, cute. But yeah, um, so basically with the rat uh, giving birth, um, I pretended like I was a prophet to the rats. Um, Neb did a great job of translating because they like understood what was happening. So I don't know really what they were saying specifically, but it seemed like the response was was really, really good. And they told us, that there are letters, and we saw letters under Christine. So when Christine moved, there were letters and they were this, and I'm showing them the notebook. Mm -hmm. And so we don't know what these letters mean, but as Neb continues, so she just speaks with animals now. 
right? So she definitely did it with those wolves. She did it with mice. That is the logical consistency that I'm using to say that perhaps she can turn into other animals that aren't just mice, because it seems like she and, has an affinity for all these creatures, right? And so she's, you're sure that Kadimikaz Kiz, I was say, if we can, if we can DC, so if we can DC, you can put up a uh, cave level three uh, oh. carving on the screen. There we go. So everyone hope okay. say it too. So we're sure that that doesn't mean something in rash language well, or well, some well, other no, they, language. They said, yeah, that's a great question. So they said. Um, or at least there was a strong indication. Again, this is translation, and I don't know what's being lost here. <laughs> but they uh, they mentioned that um, basically that it was Steve like that was originating this. But they said that there are these letters on every level in this cave, and they gave us rough directions. Now, these rough directions, you're not going to like what they said because oh, no. they basically <laughs> said that all the letters are in the the deepest, darkest, furthest part of all of the, these caves, which of sounds like they a are. masochist set this up, right? Uh, so Steve is probably a masochist, but Steve <laughs> supposedly put these in the place, and then the rat said that there was a key on the top level where we slept that night and Perusa took my ring. Um, we so, didn't see any keys lying around. No, 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 no. Maybe they were in the elevator. Wasn't yeah. the elevator just a platform? No, 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 no. We think we think that the key is Steve somehow. I don't know what that means. Maybe it's like his skeleton is up on the, the top hang, hang on. And, and yeah. uh, Maeve is going to reach into her bag and she's going to uh -huh. pull out a book. Uh-huh. It could be like a skeleton key, like literally, like it was just his bones oh, uh, and they sharpened it and carved a key. And, uh, <laughs> It's not exactly exactly the analog, but close enough. Um, and I she's going to start flipping through it. She, yes. Can I see those letters again? She pulls out a piece of paper and a pencil. Yeah. She's like, okay, well, yeah. it doesn't it doesn't fit just a straight alphabet cipher. But if it, there's a key, it's a V. And she flips with V. And yeah, right. yeah. So and she starts writing, and she goes, "I think this is the code." What? You mean? Yeah, it, it, if Steve is a key, there's a type of, of code called the Venere cipher, and Steve, it, it requires a keyword in order to interpret it. So if Steve is the key, that would no, translate the to... So, yes, so as uh, as uh, Maeve is figuring this out, she shows you in her book of codes and ciphers, the Venere yeah. cipher, uh, which was popularized by Lewis Carroll. Uh, so in it, <laughs> what it is, is that you have a a code that you want to um, send to someone secretly. So you write out your phrase and then you pick a keyword that only you and the other person know. You then write that keyword over and over again until it is the length of your code. So if your code was buy milk at the grocery store, you'd write Steve, 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 Steve across the top until every letter was accounted for. You then use a Venere cipher and DC, if you would like to put up the uh, Lewis Carroll Venere cipher that we have. Ooh. Oh. Um, so we can do oh. that. And I've even Look highlighted the STV Yay. for you. Um, uh, and as long as you then you compare the the uh, S of Steve to the first letter, the B of buy milk, and you can find what the other letter is. That way you translate it into a list of undecipherable letters. So to then put it back would be then to compare Steve to your KDMKXCK phrasing. And uh, it looks like Maeve has been working that out for you. And, and Maeve, uh, okay. Maeve, skip three, don't slip. Huh. Skip wait, three. What, what, wait, what did it say? Skip three. Don't slip. Are you saying three? Yes, one, two, three. <laughs> um, okay, so skip three, but wait. Skip we three, were, don't slip. We were on three with the rats, right? Three. So maybe there isn't a, a, a thing on level three. We can skip three. But, but But no, there was. That's where we got this. Well, like literally what it's saying right here, skip free, mm. don't slip. Don't we slip don't know if there's going to be up. some sort of grade where you have to skip ahead. You have to figure out which right. squares to step on or something like that. There's, you mean levels. like booby traps? Yes, mm -hmm. perhaps. Yeah, she said that. 
Well, Maeve, this is incredible. A wonderful job. I, I, it's amazing that you were able to figure that out. Thanks. I'm, it's just a, I like puzzles as well. <laughs> yeah, I hate them. I really, really hate puzzles, so I'm glad that you're all like while Silas has been telling the story and then Maeve has been figuring this all out, uh, Nebrat has wandered away a little bit and, and is just like taking time to explore as a rat and get mm-hmm. used to what this is like. Mm-hmm. And she's probably made her way back over to the crevasse to like look over and see if as a rat she can see anything else and is cool. dipping around the and doing all is, that. is pretty far away. You would be oh. out of sight and hearing from your party if you went there from the intersection. Just checking if that's what you want to do. Oh, I, that's what Neb. Well, yeah, Neb is going to get distracted. All right. They're all looking at the thing. She's going to be like, oh, I wonder if I could see down even further. And yeah, and then Silas goes, just goes, wait, where's Rat Neb? And <laughs> cut away. So we're going to we're going to say that in the time that it took for for Maeve to decipher, for you to you know, find it and kind of go through, you know, it's probably like maybe 10 minutes, right? So we'll give Nebrat the chance to kind of uh, have uh, explored about 10 minutes down the tunnel here. Uh, so Nebrat, yeah, you you just get it sort of interested. You have, you know, you can kind of smell more than you're used to. Yeah. And as you move forward, you feel like, oh, you kind of understand this terrain instinctually in a way that maybe you didn't as a as a person, um, as a humanoid. <laughs> and uh so yeah, as you're moving forward, you we'll say ten minutes is not you know is not too bad to get to that um, opening in the rocks. So just as you're getting to to the crevice is when your party will realize that you are not there. And I'll so, get up to the edge, and I'm just gonna peek on over just to see as a rat if I see or yes. smell anything else. So as you stick your your little rat nose down there, please make me a perception check as a rat. You can give me this advantage. So if uh, so rats have advantage on perception checks if they rely on smell. Yeah. Matt. So I will... advantage. Yes. Yeah. Uh, ooh. So that's a 21. Ooh. Ooh. Nicely. Um, so as you sort of smell your way down, you smell cold. It smells. You don't smell uh, bodies or organic material or anything like that. You just smell that like dry, cold scent of 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 frozen things wafting up from the bottom of the crevice. Which is weird because as we've descended deeper, it's gotten warmer, right? For the most part, it has. Yes. Okay. Oh, it's really interesting. Okay, I don't want to go down, but uh, oh, I should tell everybody. I. I don't know how much longer I'm going to be a rat. And at that point, she'll turn around and go back because now she's got information. All right. Mm-hmm. Ten, ten minutes have passed. You all have just realized as Silas looks around and says, where's Nebrat? Uh, you have ten minutes before she comes back. What would you like to do? <laughs> Not knowing where she has gone. So you guys have like, I mean, just in general, is there something like you're thinking as far as like, should we go back to back across the tracks or... Like, which, are, is that, are they leaning a certain I mean, way we, at all? We, pro- we probably need to find Neb, though, like, because right. Neb? she, yeah, like, Neb's not here. Neb rat. She just rat disappeared. Neb. Right. I mean, what Step if she's one. stuck in that? Step one, we think like Neb. Step two, okay. we think like a rat. Okay. Step three, huh? we think like Neb rat, okay? Okay. Let's do this. Okay. Where I've, would I've Neb go to be rat? Neb would like to explore somewhere we haven't explored before. Bad idea. Exactly. It's what That's Neb, would say. Neb yeah. yes. And then a rat would say, I'm hungry, I want trash. Or I want to have a party, apparently. Yeah, apparently, yeah. She Maybe she went back to the rat, to the rat party. party. Mm. I don't know. I mean, Well, we know that rats can't climb, so... Um, we know that neb rat can't climb (laughs) um i mean seriously like ratatouille even i mean those rats are like climbing all kinds of stuff um she's you do know that ratatouille was an animated fictional cartoon well yeah why make it if it's not real i mean they're they're good jumpers (laughs) (laughs) maybe not climbers documentary um so Um, so then how would we think like a neb rat because that's step number three. 
I think that Nebrat would look for tiny crevices to explore. Probably things only oh, a rat oh, 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 hey, there was a crevice with a rusty, uh, what did we land on? Python? Python, I think. Python. Um, Python? Python? Python. <sighs> okay, Python. See, it just it doesn't sound right. But anyway, it, it probably <laughs> so um so a rusty piton, um, and it was back this way. Okay, Ned would go to the rusty piton. I mean, based on Miss Robin's three rules of thinking, like Nebrat. Okay, all right, it's worth a shot, I suppose. If we should hurry. Yeah. Do we still have yarn in case we she do. comes back? We do. I mean, it's it's still attached back at the elevator shaft. But Before it, we start you moving around, Tyrusa, are you all right? Is your leg all right? Are you going to be okay? To yeah, move around? thanks for asking. I think I think it's fine. And I mean, I, I, I'll tell you guys about it later. But there's something really weird about that whole experience. But we'll talk about it after we find Nebrat. And uh, so, wait, do you think it's venomous or wait? Is it poisonous or venomous? I always venomous. get those mixed up. Venomous. Yeah. So, yeah. do you think it was? Venomous? Like, does somebody not me need to suck the poison out of your leg, or what? I don't know. Like, I'm just saying. Quite like, enough. are you gonna just like <laughs> be paralyzed or something from? No. What's okay. weird is that that thing really grabbed my like. It went at me like its teeth. It was not going to let go, but it kind of healed a little bit, like fast. Like it didn't do as much as you would think. I don't know. I never thought about a water snake with bones coming out of its head biting me. But if one was going to, this didn't do as much damage as I would think it did. Well, maybe you have supernatural toughness. Well, obviously I proved I don't. I almost killed us all. Well, no, I think that you fell off a giant thing and landed on your, you know, what, was it your rump or what, whatever you landed on? Well, well, okay, so yeah, you landed on your back and you're mm -hmm. like sitting here, you know, just standing and walking around and everything is hunky-dory. So I think that, I mean, there's a good chance that you have some kind of supernatural something going on there. Well, if I do, to be honest with you, I think I'm going to need some practice because lately I've noticed that Neb has been killing it. I noticed that Maeve has been actually killing things. I noticed that you've been doing some really weird things with your mind, like you were saying earlier, and Robin can create light bulbs and lights. And so far, whenever I try to apply whatever thing you think I have, either I'm not convinced and it's not working or it's just deciding something. It's just deciding that I'm not supposed to be doing it. I don't know. We can, we can spar for his, I'm a black belt wonder. Do you want to spar? <gasps> yeah. Like what? What if I punched you as hard as I could, and then honestly, we if you were what? what? What is it with you and hitting people today? No, no, we're no, not no, hitting just, any of our, our friends here. I, I'm saying, I'm saying that like I well, well first of all, I flicked. Uh, now. Well, then you suggested that we hit her this time. Well, well yeah, but but what I'm saying her. Is, is the bludgeoning like against the wall. She's not a rat anymore. What if she's stuck as a rat all the time now? Like I, I don't know if she knows how to come out of that. I'm just saying it is an option because it. Well, did you ask her if she figured out a way to try? We can't Before you the to violence. She couldn't tell us if she found out a way. So. Yeah. I mean, I was able to pull myself up, but there were. You know what it is? I feel like you guys feel confident in these new powers you've obtained in wherever the hell we are, but I'm missing a level of confidence that I have in the real world. I do not have here. So when every time I try to apply whatever it is Silas thinks I have, something's not working. I don't know if it's confidence. I don't know what I'm missing. I don't know where I am. But whatever it is, never are you. Eruza. It's As you go ahead. It's Vincent. just acceptance. Sometimes in life you just have to accept what is happening and Go with the flow, and and from there, everything can happen. I'm not Robin. I'm so not used to just accepting things going without me figuring things out and putting things into place so that 
the outcome is something that I expect to happen. That's how I've lived my life. That's how I've done everything. That is fine. That is, how, that is who you are, and I would never want you to change. I'm just saying, accept the fact that it might take you a little longer, and that is fine. Neb, as unnoticed, you've come <laughs> back to the group, <laughs> listening to the tail end of this conversation as they... They just Never super Farooza. excited. Gonna... Never super excited to like explain what has just happened, but uh, Faruza <laughs> and Robin are having what is obviously a very a very important tender moment, and so she is just standing there nodding along because she's now <laughs> forgotten she's a rat. Maeve, Maeve is going to turn and go. You didn't die. <laughs> You're still alive. Get it together, well, Neb, Queen. Yeah. Get it together. We don't have time to. It's worry like, about these things. There's things to do that we have information to find out. Wish. It's like, which one's going to win out here? <laughs> Trying to figure things out, Neb, and you just disappeared, and we weren't, we weren't sure what happened to you, so we all sort of... Oh, wait, it. Neb's back. <laughs> well, that was easy. <laughs> and I reach over with a tiny little rat claw, and I gently put it on Farooza's leg, and what she tries to say is something comforting, and what you hear is... <laughs> you going to bite me? Okay, never mind. Now she looks offended. <laughs> However, a rat you can look offended. Forever. She's gonna pet you. Are Man. you stuck forever in this form now, Neb? Are you stuck forever in this? This form? is anamorphs now, are we? Now, are we? And she's okay, no, no flicking. Give, right. give an obvious. Will, hey, wait, 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 wait. I will drop it. I will drop it. We will never talk flicking again. There's got <laughs> to be another way. Um. <laughs> Yeah, I guess she's going to try to think about being Neb again. Like, mm -hmm. I thought about being a rat, and so I'll think about being Neb. And you, you watch her just close her little rat eyes and ball up her little rat fists, and for a very long time she sits there trying to remember what she looks like. <laughs> and it's hard because you only see yourself in a mirror, and so how does she look? And if she gets it wrong, does she come back looking different? And a whole bunch of different thoughts go through her head, and then... <laughs> She's Neb again, still balled up with her fists, still yeah. eyes closed. Still a twitch like, of the nose. It's on your head. <laughs> so that's and a no one flicking then. Yeah, no, no, no flicking, apparently. Neb, no you take pliers. Oh, okay. All right, that was good. Do I look like me? Am I still me? Yeah, you do. <laughs> I, I, I vastly prefer you without the, the unsettling tail. But, oh, I you think know. the tail is kind of cute. Anyway. That, oh, you do that, you. Okay. Uh, sorry, I didn't mean to take that long. I've I hadn't done that before without the flicking, and I'm glad that I go? can. Oh, I thought about checking out that uh, crevasse that we looked at earlier, mm. um, because I I thought maybe I could see something else as a rat, and it smells. It's hard to describe. It smells cold. You know how. You know, remember when that storm was coming in outside, mm -hmm. the, the the blizzard, and you can just yeah. you can like feel it in the air, and and sometimes you can smell. That was a cat. She's from Maine. <laughs> well, it's also like when you go in the freezer with all the popsicles sense. at the convenience store. Yeah, and so it just so, has that that it has that smell in the air, and that's what's down the crevasse, which is. Very interesting because it's been warmer as we've gotten deeper into this mine. I don't know what that means. I yes. think I do. Oh. Because what? rock doesn't hold on to heat very well. And the deeper you go into caves, like the deeper, the colder it gets. So my guess is that that crevasse is deep. It also could lead outside where there's snow. Ah, there is. also could be popsicles down there. Certainly. All this entire, this entire mine was built to be a giant popsicle <laughs> refrigerator. And look, All there are rats go... named Marshall. There could be popsicles <laughs> down the crevasse. But they might be sentient. <laughs> All reasons to go explore. So do you, do you want to go down there? Or do you want to go down the other tunnel? Or do you want How? to go upstairs? How is everyone feeling? Should we take a rest? Is Do you think there's time? And I mean, it's only been two hours. But... I think we should longer. keep moving. If if Farouz is okay, I think we should move. I don't All right. Know. Fine. All right. And exploring we go. 
Okay. I don't really want to go down where the rusty pit, piton, did I, pita, piton, piton, piton. piton. Uh, I don't want to go down if we can go horizontally for a little bit longer. So I agree. Maybe let's do that. Then part. let's go to the, the other path to the left. Okay. All right, let's do it. All right, heading off to the left. And uh, uh, Robin is gathering the string so she can use it on the other side. Okay, great. That was um, a really good idea, Miss Robin. We were able to follow it very clearly. I felt like we I was in a fairy tale. <laughs> I mean, maybe you are. I think we are. <laughs> We followed the yellow yarn road. It was very fun. <laughs> All right. So Let's you just hope it's not leading it. us to a minotaur. <laughs> so you can move the cart, and you do see there's a little lever to switch the tracks if you would like to take the cart with you to the left. Yeah, Let's do it. Fine. All right. As you, who's going to pull the lever? Who wants to be in it? Oh, the lever. <laughs> Uh, yeah, Silas pulls every lever he ever <laughs> yeah. So unless somebody else is jumping in front, like he, he will absolutely do it. Right. Silas, as you pull the lever, it is rusty and very stiff, but you're able to pull it and it just... Eh, 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 no, I might need your help here, Farusa. Those tracks over so that they are now in line with the other, the left uh, you know, uh, fork of this, this intersection. Um, so yes, you continue to push the cart as you move down onto this track. Again, it's about another 10 minute walk as you, you head down these tunnels. These also, this one seems to stay pretty open. Um, this one has more of these, you know, um, post and lintel bracings, as Robin had pointed out in the structure of this cave. These are still sort of well um, braced. Um, after about 10 minutes of walking down, you come to a fairly elaborate diorama. It is a dead end, uh, but here there are mannequins dressed in mining attire. Um, you see more styrofoam rocks with gold flecks in them and lots of tools set up. Um, there is a, uh, not just a placard here, but a whole board set up that describes the different digging techniques that would have been used to create these mines. Um, the mannequins are sort of poised as though they are hammering rock. Uh, the other one has a shovel. Um, uh, you can see, uh, you know, a couple of places where there are lanterns that could be, could be lit. Um, as you sort of look at this, this placard, you can see that it is describing the different uh, digging techniques. So um, TNT, dynamite, that might have been put down to blow up hard rock. Um, the post and lintel system, um, different ways of packing the, the dirt around you in order to make sure that it stays safe. However, it does warn that even under these conditions, mines, particularly those that have been uh, without maintenance, are very unstable. Silas invested. So, did you say mannequins? Or? There are mannequins. Okay, so uh, he's just going to investigate the closest one to see. Is it something that he can turn over? The mannequin. You turn yes. the mannequin over. So there's there's let's there's you know three mannequins. One is posed as though it's you know going to start hitting the wall with its uh, or, pickaxe. Uh, yes. Or a, Another one, you only see the lower half of it. It's just like jeans sticking out of a smaller tunnel. Uh, it's already though, laying down? It's already laying okay, down good. halfway in the tunnel, um, you know, as if it's digging out, doing something there. And there's a third one sort of holding a, a map or a, you know, a fake sort of schematics, looking at it with sort of a, a protractor in its hand, pretending like it's an engineer. So Silas is going to make sure that they are all lying on their, you know, back basically he's going to place them um, all on the yeah, ground pl okay. place them all like face first or you know back first wh whichever way they can bend the easiest uh and then he finally you know is just going to turn around and say listen i've seen way too many movies where those come to life and if they come to life at least they'll have to stand up to get us and, uh, <laughs> he might have been pointing somewhere we need to but we're at it all right uh, that's a good um, point Fair enough. Um, may I look at the at the schematics that the one yeah. was looking at? Is there anything on there that is it is it a map? Is it? Give me uh, an investigation check, please. All right. I would love to come on over and, and hold up my light to give you a little <laughs> bit of hope with that. What's awesome. your intelligence bonus? Uh, plus three. Plus three. Uh, so that's that's a dirty twenty. 
a dirty 20. Um, as you're looking at these schematics, they do appear to be mine schematics, but they have a Disneyland quality to them, not a very realistic quality. These are illustrative rather than literal. Okay. Um, post and lentil, raise a pack in the dirt. Is there anything else um, described in the plaque or are there any other, if we move some stuff around, is there like mm -hmm. looking at the, looking at the diorama, is there like, uh, um, like a hidden message in there somewhere you were looking for? <laughs> I mean, yes, yes but, but I'm trying to think of where, where else is it, was the one that was digging, digging at a certain spot? Yeah, so there's there's um, almost like a just a single person sized hole in the back of the wall that the front half of this mannequin's body is sort of hidden inside um, as if it's, you know, digging out further within. Um, as you kind of move over that way, you can even see that there is a small box uh, a crate, I should say, that says TNT on it. Uh, the lid is propped open and inside you see little little red sticks. Do we well, think those real? Things. Go ahead. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, no, no. Do we think those are real? I mean, Miss, because like Robin would know. Uh, oh, I mean, I my, my hearing aid went out. What was it that we're looking at? <laughs> the, the sticks of dynamite here. Yeah, oh, these are real. <laughs> I mean, surely at the Disneyland version of this. You uh, think they wouldn't? Seems like it would be. What if we light the lantern? There was cyanide up top. It's <laughs> a dangerous museum. <laughs> what if we light the lanterns? Away from the dynamite. Yes. Away Man, what, what if I pull this guy out? Like, what if he's, what what if he's hiding something in that hole? Uh, well, let's do all of it. Faruza, do you want to? Um, actually, do we want to move the TNT? If in case I mean, real? Robin's going to inspect it. Is it fake? Yes. Uh, as you go over, you as you get closer, Robin, very delicately, it looks pretty uh, styrofoamy. Yeah, okay. You can sort of <laughs> see the texture of it and all of that. Um, it does not look real to you, no. All right, I think we're good. Uh, okay, that's I mean, good. I'm kind of comforted that this is obviously still part of what would have been our tour. We haven't yeah. stumbled upon like some wax works or mummified humans i mean according to the message we're not deep enough probably silas takes two sticks of the fake dynamite and puts yeah. it in his pack okay nice i'm gonna use very light <laughs> i'm gonna use my lit up hand and light all of the lanterns or at least try to and, and see if they actually work yeah there is oil still within the lanterns um it they light up it's really, they're directed, they're hooded lanterns so that all of the light is sort of directed right up in this diorama. As soon as you light it, you're like, oh, it's almost like you would expect if they were animatronics to kind of come to life and start doing their But they're laying land. down and they Think. can't. But they're lying down <laughs> and they have no mechanics as far as Silas could tell. Um, <laughs> but it is very well sort of lit you can really see the details of the space um and you you know it even lets a little bit of light down into that hole where the the guy is the the half the, the legs are sticking out um and you can see that even in there if you were to get down on your knees neb and really look down through the tunnel he's dressed he's got tools you know it looks as though he's you know sort of attempting to sort of dig away you know hacking at the uh, the walls within the tiny tunnel and that was actually going to be my other question. You said all these mannequins are dressed. Is the clothing yes. yeah. still viable? Viable? Yeah. I mean, it's it's dirty, uh, um, and you know, uh, but it's not fraying or you know, it's definitely they're real clothes. Do I'm any of up. them? Uh, do any of them have boots on that are roughly <laughs> Silas's? Let's find out. Uh, maybe some pants that don't. Oh no! <laughs> that aren't not the pants. <laughs> Let's well, see. having having uh, duplicates or you know backup pairs or something you can put on your hand in case you need to grab goo-covered phones, I think it's a good idea. Or in case something scares the out of us, you know, so um, <laughs> we need a change of pants. You're scared witless. In other words, man. Uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> yes, Silas. Uh, two of them have boots that you think. Okay, I, I am going now. Silas is an expert in the quality of shoes. Yes. And I am going to choose the boots that look like they are in the best shape. I'm even going to offer your your poor Air Jordans have been squeaking 
fairly with the water log that they took on yes. from your fall. <laughs> they they make an, a, a distinctive. Yeah, and so Silas is is going to take whatever those boots are. Yes. He's going to put those on, and he's yes. going to take the Air Jordans. He's going to be ringing out what he can ring out. He's going <laughs> to you know uh, put them, and he's going to try to protect them in his pack. At okay, this point. gotcha. Is there I, anything in the pockets of the mannequins? Give me an investigation clothing? check, please. And for Ruz, I know you got wet too. If there's any clothing here that might work, you might want to. As you start going through the pockets of these workers, there are some things like pencils and another protractor and you know little things that you might expect in the uh, display. Uh, but beyond that, in the pockets, all you find is that like you know like quality check by number thirty seven or you know one of those kinds of. Uh, they forgot to take the tags off. Got it. Oh. I'm assuming they're not wearing any form of jacket. Like um, one of them is the 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 schematic guy is wearing a, a jacket. They all have helmets on with a you know a little light in the front. Um, you know they all look like there's something out of the eighties. Is it a leather oh, jacket? <laughs> is it a leather jacket? No, it's that kind of like workman's canvas okay. uh, kind of uh, material. Yeah. So like padded quilted yeah it's quilted yeah. on the inside <laughs> do, do, exactly. does anyone need a jacket like the the hoodie got a little wet here and I it does look it, it does look warm the jacket Ooh, I, does anyone I think, need one i'm okay but i'm actually looking at the helmets as a possibility yeah go I'm ahead worried about I was yeah. Yeah. Jacket, adding that is, to my inventory you've got it yeah, okay. Rosa, which did you want and I'll, I'll take the other pair of shoes if nobody wants them yeah. They yeah. Okay. Get out of as much of those wet clothes as possible. Yeah. Okay. So, so are they are they just like boots, like work boots? Yeah, they're just boots. like you know, good old Timberland sort of nineteen okay. eighties, nineteen nineties work boots. Okay. So Bruce is going to take carefully take off her Burberry <laughs> boots, <laughs> gingerly put them aside, like with a look of like just grimacing, and then pull on they have a little of your boots. blood on it. <laughs> Yeah, like down. kind of up like this, like going, okay, this is good. This is great. We're good. Okay. Um, but yeah, they're all in kind of flannel and jeans and uh, and work clothes. One of them is, has one of those sort of like, you know, like Dickie's jumpsuit kind of things. That's the one that's in the, uh, in the tunnel. Like overall? Yeah, kind of like, like, well, like a full on, uh, you know, like engineer's jumpsuit. Oh, oh like a boiler um, suit. Yeah, boiler. There you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Got you. Um, they have been distressed so they have like you know uh they, you know they're dusty and dirty from being down here but they also have been made to look pretty dirty authentic so it's, it's maybe yeah. it's fake dirt i mean i'm if Rosa looks down at her really wet black hair <laughs> it's like should i can you, can you help me undress this this and um, i'm gonna put these on and tie it at the waist for now just until my, right. my pants dry Turn so you're, you're going to take the one that's in, you're going to take the full boiler suit. The boiler the guy. suit, yeah. All right. So Tied as you, up, as you pull up, him out. Inside the, the arms around her waist. Totally. Yeah. As you pull him out of the tunnel to undress him, um, he is like, all the others have kind of like expressions that you'd make sense of, but this guy, clearly they weren't really expecting you. He's very... <laughs> and a big smile really was meant for like the Barney's window, not at all for this display, but he's probably, you know, inexpensive. Do you pull him out, um, sort of undress him? None of these guys have any kind of like undergarments. They were just the one layer. They're mannequins. They're yeah. mannequins. For reason, yeah. you should have bought him a drink first. <laughs> okay. and... But yes, you now have those. Um, yeah. They are luckily tall enough for you if they are quite a bit baggy, but you can uh, tie them around your waist. It's very cool. Uh, so you're ready, right for a music video, you know, from our childhood. Uh, awesome. <laughs> um, on the and yes, the, the tunnel now there. Good. On the posts and lintels, is there anything carved on them? I know Steve was carved upstairs. Yes. Investigation, but... please. Actually, go ahead and roll that for me. Okay, you plus three. <laughs> plus three. Um, as you begin to look at all the different posts and lintels around here, there's the one little post um, that's kind of supporting this smaller tunnel that Feruza just pulled the mannequin out of. And now that you're down closer to it, kind of keeping an eye on it, 
quick, like taking a look at it, you actually mm -hmm. turn your head a little bit and just on the underside, you think you see something carved. Um, as you look closer, it once again says Steve. Uh, uh, this is say, carved Dave, for right? Steve again. Look in the tunnel. Maybe there's something there. Yeah, I really liked his own name. <laughs> I'll scooch and, down now that we've pulled the mannequin out and look yes. through where it was. So Nev, you're climbing halfway into the tunnel kind of thing? <laughs> yeah, I mean, unless someone stops me. Be a lot mm -hmm. easier if you Turn the rat, lights I'm just into it. Okay, to help look. Um, yeah, Nev, as you come there, it's, it's pretty tight. You know, you think any of you could fit, but it's, you know, uh, um, okay. as you sort of move your, you know, you fit the easiest into this small space. Um, as you kind of turn onto your back and, and look up and around, you know, it, it's, it's just a lot of like dirt and rocks, um, you know, the little tools that are in the guy's hand, you know, look more like archeological tools, like a brush and things just to kind of take away, you know, loose yeah. pieces. Um, if you want to give me an investigation check for looking deeper. Uh, may yeah. I help her with, with holding sure. the flashlight? Holding the light, what's your int bonus? Uh, it is a plus one. Plus one. And I, I would love you to roll that. I have a plus five to my investigation. So plus six. Oh, nice. <laughs> Okay, um, something in you, you're not quite sure why, decides to like reach out a hand and just kind of knock at it. Cause you're like, this doesn't, this looks so different than the rest of the, the cave around you. Uh, it doesn't look the same sort of structure or shape or thing. As you touch the back of this tunnel, it flaps. Oh, wow, that was really well hidden. Hey, uh and I'm going to push it and it, what's behind it. It's a little canvas backdrop that has been well sort of, um, there's definitely some sort of glue or something to put real soil on the front of it. It really blended in well, but as you kind of tap at it, it flaps open and there is just pitch black darkness beyond. But again, you get this little draft and the sort of scent of stale air from beyond. Oh, wait, wait. Hey. Everyone, um, there's there's a secret cave back here. There's a secret tunnel. I we're on an adventure, and I've actually found a secret tunnel. This is the best. Secret tunnel. Secret tunnel. Secret tunnel. Secret tunnel. <laughs> uh, it, it's a pretty um, pretty tight squeeze. I can keep on going forward, but you all kind of were upset the last time I wandered off. <laughs> well, we wouldn't want you to go alone. I mean, and... I don't know if I'm fitting in there. Yeah, can, me neither. Can Silas actually fit in there? Because he is going to be very prone to say that he can't, um, even if he might can't. <laughs> um, Silas, you you think you could. It would not be fun. Yeah. But you think you could. It'd be another piglet and poo situation. <laughs> that is apt. All right. Uh, yeah, comparison. Not to say we split ourselves again <laughs> but three of us can fit through here and two of us probably couldn't i've got those granny hips so maybe we investigate what do you guys think i'd like to know what's back there me too so uh Feruza, i don't know if you want to go i think we should stay here and just in case to maybe they could hold on to the yarn yes i'm sure that because then we could see how far it is Sure. I like it. What um, do you guys think? I, I think that sounds great. Let me get out of the way and I will scooch forward uh, and exit to a place in where I can stand up and be out of the way. All right. Neb, that doesn't happen. As you push oh. yourself through the canvas into the space beyond, uh, it becomes more rock, uh, really quite like a little rock tunnel that you can just begin weaving your way through. Um, you're able to kind of bring your hips up, but you can't stand. Um, about how, like what's, has it gotten smaller? Is it a little bigger? About the, like what's about the same. Um, I mean, there's a little more room to the side. You could maybe stretch your arms out. You're maybe thinking maybe like there's three feet wide, maybe a foot and a half tall. So I could turn around if I needed to. You could turn around if you needed to. Okay. Uh, but you do as you kind of 
reach your hand forward, it does seem to sort of continue your headlamp. You know, your head is, you know, the, the helmet of your headlamp is sort of, you know, hitting the, the, the rock at the top, but you can kind of see that it, it continues. Yeah. It's not a tunnel into a, another cave. It seems to be a tunnel that keeps going. There's going to be a lot of crawling. Be careful. If it gets any narrower, you come back. Absolutely. And I will slowly keep going. Just to I will say her. that if you get stuck, we probably can't come in there and get you. So, Well, well if I get stuck, I'll just turn into another rat. Oh, right? yes, yes, that's perfect. That's perfect. Now, All that right. might not help Perusa and Maeve. But... Yeah. Maeve, you I'm said you were small. Falling. So it's not, I'm not that much bigger than Neb is. So, yeah, I'm falling. All right. Yeah. Perusa, you as well in the back? Um, I feel like I should go, but if, but if, if it, honestly, if she, if it's as small as she's saying it is, maybe we'll just let those two go for now. All right. And I'll just, if I need to, I will, I'll be fine following in, but let's just see what happens. Maeve. All right, Neb. Maeve, and Maeve, are you holding real, real the quick, yellow before string? Before you go. Oh, go ahead. Before you yeah. go, listen. Maeve backs out of the tunnel. What? It, it doesn't have too much charge. But <laughs> this can be the light. light and dark places for you. I told you, Silas. That ring Thank is you. not run by batteries. I don't think <laughs> that. In brightest day and blackest night, just no puzzle clues shall escape your sight. All right, then. <laughs> Maeve goes and starts tucked right. in a pocket and starts calling. Starts to climb for it. All right, Neb, <laughs> you are leading the way down this uh, very tight little tunnel. Um, as you pull yourself forward, uh, you know, you can feel the rock scrape against your body as you have to kind of contort yourself to make it around this curve, uh, pulling yourself forward very quickly. <sighs> the just breath begins to get much more labored. Um, you hear the sort of echo bang of your own body. There's nothing but the sound of your breath in front of you as you pull yourself forward along your stomach. Uh, Maeve, you follow up behind very quickly. Their feet disappear from the flap uh, in the back of the tunnel. We'll come back to the three of you. In a May I look yes. behind to see if there's anything like written on the back of, back side of the campus? Absolutely. As you sort of turn your head and it's hard, you can't fully, you know, flip around, but you can kind of get your head so that you, you see the entirety of your body back at the back of the canvas and it looks clear. It doesn't look okay. like anything is written upon it. Um, but it is it is quite a heavy flap that really, you know, shuts out all the light from those lanterns on the other side. Um, you then turn your head back and you can just see Neb's sneakers or boots or whatever Neb is wearing at this point. I got sneakers, yeah. Disappear uh, okay. as you begin to follow her deeper into this cave. So Neb, as you pull yourself through this, um, all you can kind of hear or sense is there's some dripping. Um, there's a little scamper of something, a skitter of something further along every once in a while. Um, it's quite dry in this in this section, but you do feel like you hear dripping from beyond, um, further down. Uh, every once in a while, you do hear a little a little ratty now noise that you now recognize um, as you pull yourself forward. So it, you've been going for about five minutes here. Are you interested oh. in continuing? Uh, I'll stop for a second and kind of let myself uh, take a, a moment and look back at Maeve and say, it's still going pretty far. Uh, we've been going for a while. If we want to turn back, I feel like now's the time before we keep going. Do you see anything ahead? Uh, can I take a, a real good look and a good listen <laughs> and try to... I Give me a perception but... check, please. Uh, I would love you to roll that. It's a plus five. All right, plus five. Here we go. Okay. Um, you sort of get everyone to kind of quiet down so you can just almost close your eyes and listen and, you know, uh, just trying to get a sense of what's ahead, even though you can't see it because it's just more of this rocky tunnel. And as you listen to those drips and you feel how dry this, this section is, you do feel like 
there has to be some place where water can be present, where humidity can occur, you know, for this to, to, to happen. And so there must be, there's even an echo a little bit to that drip that must suggest a larger cavern somewhere up ahead. I'm hearing drip echo. So I think there might be a, a cavern up ahead, hopefully something big enough that we can stand up. Do you want to keep going? I want to see what's there. Me too. I'm glad you said that. It feels like a good idea, so probably is. I think if you think it's a good idea, then we absolutely should. And I'll continue forward. As you continue to pull yourself forward, you're feeling, you know, the scrapes on on your hands and your knees against the rock. Um, Again, this tightness. uh, You finally think up ahead. You can see where this opens up into a larger space. However, the tunnel narrows quite a bit just before that. It's gonna require arms forward or arms down on the flat of your stomach, um, really just shoulder wiggling your way through this last passage. Okay, Um, and we've got the helmets on that have the light on the front of them. Yep. I'm gonna stop and say to me, there's a really narrow passage coming up. Give me a second. I want to take off the helmet and I want to do a little frisbee toss in front of me with the light on and see if I can get it through the hole so that I have a a better idea of what's on the other side because I I know I can always flame fist to get light in here. All right. Uh, Off goes your helmet, which skitters across this, you know, thin passage and drops. You just see a faint sort of light flick above and then it sort of clatter, clatter, clatter disappears from sight. And it, it I hear a lot of clattering, like a, 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 a good, very steep drop? A good bit of clattering, yes. Mm. Um, so, good news and bad news. We didn't fall. Bad That's news always is, good. Yeah, bad news is I think there's a really big drop after this hole, and I'm a little worried about going through it without being prepared for that. Well, can you just look through, perhaps, and maybe we don't go through it now and we come back with okay. better preparations for that but once we see what's there. Maybe there's a ladder. That's true. That's true. All right. Um, I'm just going to scooch forward a little bit then, and I'll I'll go up to where it narrows. Okay. And I'll go arms first and light up my hand and okay. see if I can see through... All right, you squeeze your arms against the the sides of your head, lighting up your fist and just sort of using your body and your legs wiggle forward, almost sort of like a a lizard uh, to get yourself out towards that, uh, that hole. As you do, your arms pull forward. You can just grip the sides of the rock and kind of, again, sort of wiggle your head enough out into this open space. Um, As you get out there, you can see that this is, uh, it's not a vast cavern, but it is a deep drop. Um, And in fact, it's just about six to 10, let's say like eight feet across um, where you can see another ledge, but this is just dead drop. Uh, You're not quite sure how deep it goes. Um, your light does not reach the bottom. As you look up, your light does not reach the top. It just seems to be kind of along to the sides either. So it's sort of a long crack in the earth. Um, You do see a couple of feet down, like I said, eight feet across and a couple of feet down, there is another sort of cave opening. Um, Even off maybe up to the left, you see another cave opening up in there. So there are other places to go but they are across this kind of chasm. And do I see where my helmet fell and how far away that light is? Interesting, yes, you do. Uh, so that is, you know, it'd be hard to guess exactly how far, it's farther than the 30 feet, but maybe 50 to 60 below. Oh, that's a big drop. That's a very large drop. Um, Maeve, did we bring any rope? Oh, I think you're muted. I can't hear you. My head is through the, the rock. <laughs> I do, Sorry, I do on, have me... some in my pack. Um, if I can sort of 
sort of just trying to fit it in the thing yes. and kind of unclip it from my belt. And yeah. So and and Neb, you would have had to have either, if you had a pack, taken it off or done something to have squeezed through this this tight passage. Okay. Yeah, um, I would have taken off yeah. that big satchel. I would have left okay, behind. Great. So the back there. Fantastic. Well. So yes. God. We've got. Two options. We can try to anchor a rope somewhere and go on down, or we can turn around and go back. Well, we're here, aren't we? This is true. Do you have a good way to anchor the rope somewhere? Um. Well, I'm kind of just stuck out here in the darkness for the moment. <laughs> Adam is so glad Silas did not get it. Is there <laughs> I'm glad that uh, neither Lauren nor Neb are claustrophobic. <laughs> are there any, um, does it look like there's anything to anchor a rope? I mean, there's plenty of rock and, you know, joins in the rock and, you know, okay. uh, you know, from the little bit that you know from Robin, this is a doable climb. Um, you guys are not experts. Um, you know, I think even Robin maybe was potentially telling you about ways to span a, 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 across a, across or something like this, and the, the way that you can set up ropes in which to do that. It requires one person to do a jump, but there's a way to secure it so that if you do miss, you just I mean, only fall a short bit. In high school, I did briefly compete in track and field. I can try and jump across if you want me to, but... Do you want to try to go straight across? Then I was figuring we try to get to the ledge down below and take a good look around. But if, if you think we you can, can do make that, it... But if we can anchor that, we can get across and then... I don't know. I'm not sure. The passage that's across, yes. does that look like a passage we could stand in, or is that also a... Tight, None of these tight. look pretty, look standable. They mm. they seem to be crawling on your belly kind of tunnels. Well, I feel like if we're going to convince the others to come, we need to at least have places that they can stop and stand. So maybe mm -hmm. instead of across, we, we try to get to the ledge down first. Go down. Sure. It'll also be easier to turn around and go back at that point, right? That's true. All right. All okay. right. So you have some, you have two, well, let's see. Just, uh, climbing gear, I'm trying to think, because you all had climbing gear for the the shaft down. But let's say, you know, maybe there was, no, you all used it. Uh, so yeah, we'd have I, the I harness have in the climbing on. kit. It has yeah. pitons, boot tips, gloves, right. and a harness. Right. Um, which what I'm trying to think in terms of the ropes and things that you use to come down. But we're going to say you have you have enough for the two of you to create something that would allow you to maybe not simultaneously, but one at a time, clip into and climb down. OK, um, so what we will do is a survival check to see if you are capable of uh, I said, as I said, we could give this to you with advantage since Robin gave you a lesson um, to see if you were able to create something that will allow you to free climb down the side of this cliff safely. Do you want both of us to roll or one both of, of us? You, both of you can roll it with advantage. Okay. Ooh, an unnatural 20. Hey. Oh, Neb, hey. Neb really Neb. wants to keep going. Neb was listening during yeah. orientation. Yes. So I'm that's a, a 23. A 14. Okay, a 23 and a 14. So with that, so Neb, you're feeling really enthusiastic. You sort of take the lead on this. Um, and you're just like thinking back to like, Robin had pointed out like the good joins in the rock where you can really drive a piton in really solidly, how you then, you know, can hook on your, your carabiners in the right way and string your rope so that if you were to fall, it'll catch you after just a couple of feet. Um, you even sort of remembered how, you know, you can actually ask Maeve to be on belay as you're going down so that she can help, you know, brace you and you don't fall too far. And you're using the sort of pulley system of the ropes to make that possible. Um, so you're going to take your time to do this right. Um, while you are setting this up, we will go back to those of you back in the diorama cave. And I, I feel like as this scene fades out, the last thing is I'm looking at Maeve is we're getting ready to do this. And I'm like, we, we yeah. owe Robin like three steak dinners <laughs> and a, a, you know, a comfy pillow after this, right? It, it, absolutely. Or at least a couple of drinks. 
It needs to be hand, the pillow needs to be like hand embroidered, uh, cross, <laughs> cross stitched saying like badass granny or something like that. On I bet you yes. Silas has a towel that will work <laughs> perfectly. All right. So as you all are preparing your uh, rope trick here, we will go back to the three of you in the diorama room. Uh, so the three of you see their feet disappear and, you know, it's going to take them a good 20 minutes to 30 minutes to really get where they're going and set this up. So we'll see what feels right for all of you in that time. Mm -hmm. So they've, their feet have just disappeared behind the canvas. They've been gone way too long at this point. They just <laughs> they just left. Yeah, Silas is still. <laughs> I too am very worried. And tunnels tend to get smaller and smaller and Running around can be difficult. I mean, we definitely shouldn't go after them, but we probably shouldn't leave in case they need us, right? Oh, no, not at all. We shouldn't leave. I think we should actually set like a time limit. Like if they're gone at a certain time, maybe we should try to go after them, like pick a time. And that's when we maybe. think the work. Well, right? maybe in the meantime, like, you know, I, I don't know. Do you want me to take a look? at your leg there like all right all right this is uh this is silas wondering if feruza needs any uh help with with feeling better <laughs> are you uh are, are, are you in pain do we need to wrap it or anything Oh, you're talking about my body. I thought you meant like how I was doing. Here, no, 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 good. no. Sorry, I was I was talking about you know uh, physical healing and not mental or spiritual healing. Yeah. Oh, well, okay. Bruce is gonna like gingerly sit down in the dirt in her new, I guess, boiler suit. Yeah. <laughs> and <laughs> you look cool. And with a Harvard T-shirt out, Harvard shirt out over me, <laughs> and she's gonna pull up the leg, and your I guess. He's gonna see like the the, the half sort of yeah. and what punctured leg is that what it yes. happened? Yes, but it definitely as as you describe Feruza, it's it seems to be healing faster mm -hmm. than you know you would have really expected it to look nasty. I, um, but here it, you're right, it's bruised. There's you know you can see the puncture marks, the the cuts in the skin, but they're sort of scabbing over and and the bruising isn't as sort of deep purple green as you would have expected it to be. Have you guys oh. seen anything like this before? I mean, I mean, Rob, I mean, Robin, Robin, do you have any experience with you know, snake bites? I don't know. I would have expected that to be way worse. I mean, it definitely doesn't look venomous. Yeah, you look, you look it looks good. <laughs> hmm. um, and, you know, Silas is essentially at this stage, not knowing how long they're going to be is yeah. trying to uh, take a short rest. Okay. Um, and, okay. and so, you know, uh, f through the uh, middle of that, and um, ultimately, uh, you know, as part of that, no, um, you know, essentially hit dice being spent if, gotcha. if, uh, if, if we wanted to do that. So short rest is an hour. So if mm -hmm. you wanted to say that, you know, as, as you'd mentioned, you know, there's is a certain amount of time that we would wait, you know, before mm -hmm. we either pursue or something like that. You could say that that's an hour, um, and that will allow us to kind of fast track your bits. So the three of you could take a short rest, okay. Okay. Um, if that's if that's I mean, uh, it, it, desirable. Yeah, but, but, but that's yeah, that's just what Silas is saying. So if, uh, yeah. anybody if that's desirable. that we're if we're wanting to do uh, Robin or Feruza, then we can absolutely do that instead. Robin doesn't need a rest, so she'll just keep kind of vigilant. Did the okay, did the did they go in with the string? Did they? Yeah, I think the... Maeve. I think Maeve had grabbed the the yellow okay. yarn. So um, uh, the plan is for Robin is to you know it might not work as far as they go, but when yeah. time that we're worried about them, I'm going to start tugging on it. As okay, gotcha. Like a, it's a good idea, Robin. Did you want that to be at, at 30 minutes? Uh, I 15? think it's a 30, 30 at minute 30. mark. Okay, great. Okay, great. Um, so we're going to say right as Neb and uh, Maeve, you're finishing your setup um, and you start to make your way down the side of this cliff. Now, this is 
real climbing. Uh, so this will be advantaged athletics checks as you climb down the side of this cliff. You have set up ropes that will help you if there's an issue. Um, and I'll, I'll let you know, Hope, at what point the 30 minutes is for them. All right, we'll be right back. All right, Neb, uh, you know, you and uh, Maeve have set this up. You have confidently feel like your uh, rope system will uh, support you. Who wants to climb and who wants to belay? Uh, I will climb first since I'm in front. Okay. Um, and so thank Robin again for that advantage athletics check because that gave me an 18. An 18, all right. Yeah. As Neb begins to climb down, you know, Maeve, you guys have hooked this up so that it's, you know, pulled around behind you so that you can use your body weight against it and just sort of pay it out as Neb continues to, to climb down the side. Uh, Neb, you make pretty good time. You're finding your handholds, uh, making your way down. As soon as you set foot on the ledge by your helmet, which is about, you know, 30 feet below you, and you can see that this continues down another 20 feet, um, as you look, oh no, I'm sorry, your, your helmet hat, as you find a ledge at 30 feet and you see your helmet 20 feet below, now you can make out that it is landed on a pile of clean white bones. Ugh. I'm gonna take a really long look at that. And there's, if anyone could see a lot of emotions that go past Neb's face, there's a, there's a shock, there's that super cool. That's oh wait, that's super creepy. Um, and then there's a, a sl slight bit of horror of are we about to see human bones? But she's gonna take a moment and give a really good look. Can I tell what kind of bones they are? Investigation is gonna be disadvantaged since you're so far away. That that's that's fair. That's fair. Um. All right. All right. That's still a sixteen. Still a sixteen. Okay. Um. You definitely see animal skulls that are easy to recognize. You see other bones that could be humanoid. Um, hard to tell, a rib cage, you know, other creatures have rib cages, uh, but you know, it, it creeps you out a little bit and they are picked clean. And I'll do one more look around to see, can I see who might have picked them clean? Uh, at this point, nothing, you, you know, you hear rats, you see some scurrying of like those small, there are insects and things down there. You can see that kind of movement, but nothing large, nothing that looks predatory. Okay. At this point, what at a wonderful point. phrase. Yeah. I will uh, land on this ledge, do that look around and then up to Maeve and, and Maeve, she's being quiet partially because it's going to echo but also yes. you can tell she's a little this this has bothered her a little bit she's go i've reached a ledge i'm not at my helmet yet there are a lot of bones down below uh what what sort of bones um i can't really tell but they're there's a lot of animal bones, but there might be some human bones. They're very, they're very old. They're very clean. Are you sure they weren't the snacks at the rat party? No, the the rat party was a bunch of bugs. That that's this is definitely not. This is definitely not what the rats were having. Do, um. I Do don't you see know. any tracks. I'll take another look. You give me a disadvantaged survival from this distance. Let's see what we can do at disadvantage. It's not as good. 14. 14. Um, right in the light from your helmet, as it shines across this sort of pile of bones onto the wall at the opposite side, you think you see a human handprint in blood. In fresh blood, in um, old, You're gone. Really pretty far away to be okay. able to tell. It's a red, you know, it's dark, it's dry. It's certainly not like dripping fresh blood in that sense, but you could not give it like, 
you could not date it okay. <laughs> from right. this distance. Uh, it is, you know, it wasn't made in the last 10 minutes. <laughs> okay, okay. Um, yes, I see a track of a handprint on the wall. It might be blood. I don't know. It's a human handprint, though. All right. At this point, Robin, it's been 30 minutes. You would start tugging on the uh, yellow string. Maeve, uh, do you have that? Are you holding it? Have you tied it off? What did you do with that yellow yarn? Um. Yeah, I could have put it on my, tied it to my wrist, I guess. Well, I, okay. it's got to be, it's got to be rigged so that it can um, unfurl. I think I, maybe I put it through a belt loop. Actually. Okay. Um, so let's give a perception check from you. Twelve. Twelve. Unfortunately, you do not notice as the little yellow yarn begins to unspool, getting pulled back uh, through your belt loop. Robin, as you give it a tug, it just keeps coming as you pull it and it snags every once in a while on what might be a rock but it doesn't seem to be attached to anything any longer robin all right stop we'll pulling it ladies in the uh in the pit of death uh, <laughs> you stop pulling it okay robin. i stop pulling it oh no oh no 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 no, no. This, this is not good you just, and i'm kind of just showing them the slack like does what that if, mean what i think it means it could mean a lot of things but none of them good I mean, it could mean that the yarn just broke. I mean, once it gets wet, doesn't it get, you know, hard, hard to stay together? Okay, maybe, yes. Or they could be absolutely falling to their death, just like oh, the God. Peton guy. Oh, my God. Oh, no. We didn't what? hear any screaming. Did we hear screaming? Did you guys hear anything? I was completely no. in my own head. Nothing. No. It's, it's just that now, if we were to go in... And there's multiple ways to go. We, we might not know which way to go, or, I mean, even oh, worse, no. they could get lost. Or we could just get stuck. That's true. I honestly, I cannot go in there. Uh, they were looking at me for. I, 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 and I, I, Robin, I definitely and, Robin and Silas, you would fit. It would just be tight. You would <laughs> fit. I just want to let you know that this is a, this is not a uh, can can't as much as a yeah. choices. Yes. This, okay, good. this is Wait, a Robin no, no, no. cannot. <laughs> absolutely. That is absolutely fine. Robin cannot. I'm fine with that. I'm just letting sure you know that it is an option uh, should you change your mind. I mean, okay. what I I mean, genuinely, what are we supposed to do? Like if, if they <laughs> didn't turn around, they they could be in trouble and they might be so far away at this point that we wouldn't even hear if they called. We can send I mean, you can go. Maybe Feruza can can go and search for them, and maybe even save them. Uh, uh, they could cause yeah, just like a the... third person dying. That's true. That's true. Oh my gosh, this is like this is literally a crossroads. Two of our <laughs> friends are missing. We're standing here. We have no idea what happened to them. We have no idea how to get in touch with them. Yeah, that there's no cell reception. It's a movie, right? Yeah, I mean, I've seen a lot of movies like this, and most of the time that they don't go so well for like the entire cast. Like, you know, normally one or two survive, but um well, I mean, I felt like, you know, I felt like Maeve and Nev were main characters though. So maybe, maybe in this movie they're going to to live. <laughs> um boy. <laughs> I'm trying Listen, to I don't know any other choice. Like I, I, I mean, I, I'll, I'll go in there after them. Um, I wish we could establish some way to. Miss Robin, you said you know Morse code. Yes. Um, is that gonna help, Silas? Well, well, no. What I'm saying is, like, if I take something that will bang on the rock, can do we think we can hear that from a long way away? I don't know, because if. If something happened to Maeve and Neb, they would have, we would have heard screams, right? Wouldn't we have heard? I mean, would we? I don't well, know. I mean, unless you, you haven't heard anything them. since they went through that flap. So it depends on how far you go. Maybe you can take the string, we pull it back, you go in, and we can communicate through Morse code using the string. Well, I, I actually scarily 
do know a little Morse code, but I don't have time to review it. I, I can All you need is SOS. long, 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 short, 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 long, long, long. Okay. Right, 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 right. I can't just go um, slow with it so I can try to, I mean, I had to take a lot of weird classes in law school, but they didn't focus on Morse code, if you know what I mean. It's a thing. All right. It was a 7 a.m. class, you know, most people just sleep <laughs> through it, you know, just for credit. Uh, okay. I, listen, I don't know any other thing to do. I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll go in there. Uh, Miss Robin, if if you can't make it, though, I want to make sure that you're safe here. Well, if Feruza stays with me, I should be fine. That's fine. Mm -hmm. I'm going. I'm going. Right. Okay. You can Silas do this. is going to enter the cave. All right. And then w when I do get on the other side of the flap, yes. because that comment was made, I Silas is going to, hey, can you can you both still hear me? Like yes. when I'm fully on the other side. On the other side of the flap, they can they you can just hear him. He is very muffled um, through that flap. Is the flap something I can rip off? <laughs> um, give me an investigation check. I mean, Silas doesn't know what's going on, and so he's just going to try to see if he can. Uh, yeah, you can make that. Uh, okay, his investigation I will make that. is plus four. Okay. Um, you are having trouble turning around in this space. So even just with your feet, you kick at it a little bit and you're able to just sort of dislodge it a little bit from where it's sort of stuck up at the top so that it hangs, you know, you get a couple of inches, a little bit of that light comes through, but you feel like you probably have to like back up, get a tool or, you know, really yank it. Can, can you hear me any better now? That's what he's trying. A little bit. Okay, all right, not worth it. All right, I'm going. Wish and, me luck. And as he goes, Robin's like, oh, blast my memory. It's three short, three long, and then three short. Oh, no. <laughs> what? <laughs> what were you trying to say to him in more code? Well, that's SOS. Oh. It's okay. We'll know what he means. You'll know what he means. <laughs> okay. Okay. Oh, so. Oh, so. Oh, so. <laughs> <laughs> Also, he's fine. Okay. Oh, no. Also, he's fine. Uh, okay. Oh, no. um, so yes, as uh, as uh, Silas turns and makes his way into the darkness ahead, uh, for Ruza and Robin, you watch his feet disappear very quickly. The sound disappears. The light from his headlamp, as you just hold that yellow string and see it pay forward as he pulls it taut again following it deeper into the cave. Um, we're going to start to pull this together. We will leave Feruza and Robin in that room. Silas, it's going to take you 10, 20 minutes to make your way through these. We will come back to you right outside of that tight section before it opens. For Maeve and Neb, Neb, as you're standing down there at the bottom, and you know you and, and Maeve have been as quietly as you can communicating uh, what you're seeing. At the bottom, just a little movement catches your eye somewhere at the farthest extremes of your headlamp as you turn, just you know, illuminating 10 feet at a time in the distance. You just hear a little and catch another quick movement at the edge of your vision. From there, we will take our break for this week. Oh. Thank you all so much for playing. Please remember that life itself is the most wonderful fairy tale. And we will see you all next week. Bye, everybody. I hate it and love it. <laughs> <laughs>